Hey friends, welcome back to another pottery tutorial. This was a, another video requested by you guys. And so today we're going to be making handles. Now there are thousands of ways of making handles, um, but in this video, I'm going to be covering six different methods. I won't be covering the two most popular ways of making handles because I don't really feel like those are suitable for working from home. That's pulling handles and extruding. Pulling handles is a messy job that requires a lot of water and I don't really feel like doing it in my home, so I imagine that you guys wouldn't either. And well, I don't think that you guys probably have an extruder at home. We have this big wall mounted extruder in our studio, but you can also get these smaller versions. I just don't happen to have one of those. Um, but if you're interested in that type of handle making, there's loads of videos already on YouTube and maybe I'll cover that at some point as well. Uh, so let me know if you want me to show you pulling handles or extruding handles because I've got loads of experience with both. What I want to cover in this video are a few different alternative ways of making handles. Um, they're all suitable for working from home and they all can add their own unique look. So let's get into it. So I have some leather hard mug bodies here that I uh, threw on the wheel and very carefully transported them uh, from my studio. Um, I just threw them because this is how I normally make mugs. Um, I don't really like to hand build mugs and I figured a simple uh, wheel thrown shape would be a really nice canvas to show you some uh, hand building techniques. However, of course you can also hand build the mug too. I already have a video on how to hand make a mug. Uh, so definitely go check that out and this video we're going to be focused on making handles. The tools I will be using for these handles are two thickness gauges. These are both half a centimeter, a rolling pin, a wooden shaping tool, a paintbrush, a pencil, a knife, a needle tool, a scoring tool, a rib, some water with a sponge in it, and some slip. These are the tools I'm going to be using for all of the handles. Um, some of the handles will require all of these tools, um, but you'll see this is kind of like my basic pottery from home toolkit. Um, so I'm basically using all of my tools that I have here at home. And the clay I will be using is stoneware. I always use stoneware in all of my pottery. In all of my videos, I'll be using stoneware. This one happens to be a white stoneware. So first I'm going to start with a slab handle. That means I have to roll it a slab of clay. The thickness gauges here help me to make sure I'm not rolling a slab thinner than a half centimeter. Then I always compress my slabs with a rib. This helps the clay not to crack or warp. Then, using my thickness gauge as a guide, I'll cut out my little handle. I didn't measure, but it's approximately two centimeters wide. Now I'm cutting the top and bottom of my handle so that they fit with the curve of the mug. At the same time, I'm holding it up to my mug to see what size I want and where I want to place it. Then I'm using my needle tool to mark where the handle will attach so I know where to score. I'll score both the mug body and the handle and apply slip to both sides too. Then I'll press the handle into my mug body as firmly as I can without distorting the shape of the mug. Take your time with this to really make sure it's well attached. Any slip that squeezes out you can deal with later. So you can leave your mug like this if you're sure that you've got a really good attachment. Uh, if you're not sure, or if you simply like the look of a thicker point where the mug and handle meet, you can add tiny coils to either side, like I'm doing here. Blend in those coils as best you can with your finger. Sometimes I'll use a little water or slip on the top of the coil to soften the clay so I can push it in easier. Afterwards, it can be cleaned up with a sponge or your finger until it's nice and smooth. The last thing I always do is to check my handle in profile, keeping an eye on the negative space to make sure it's got the curve that I want. Okay, so the last one you've probably seen before, but this one is a fun technique that not many potters use. 
First, you'll want to roll out a slab, but keep it thicker than the last one. Mine is about one centimeter thick, but I didn't measure it because I didn't have any one centimeter thickness gauges handy. Then, using something round, cut out a circle. You could actually do many shapes here. Uh, in the moment, you'll see what I'm, where I'm going with this, and then you can imagine other shapes too. You see now? <laughs> now I decided I want to cut a little hole in the middle, so I found something round that was about the right size to use as a stencil. By the way, with all these handles, I'm constantly checking how the handle looks against the mug as I'm sculpting. You'll want to keep an overview. Then, just like last time, you'll want to mark where the handle will attach and slip and score that part, as well as the handle itself. Then press as hard as you can without distorting the pot. Take your time with the attaching and the shaping. Here I'm using a tool to clean up the extra slip that squeezed out. Okay, this is another classic. That's a coil handle. First you want to roll out a coil in the thickness that you want your handle. Mine is about the thickness of my finger, say 1.5 centimeters thick. Then you want to start shaping. Make sure you hold your handle up to your pot while you're shaping to get the length and shape that feels right to you. Consider which side of the handle looks right on the top and bottom. Then it's our good friends again, scoring, slipping, and pressing. You see? All attachments are basically the same. The same goes for adding feet or any other add-ons to your pottery. It's all about slipping and scoring. Here's another adaptation on the coil handle. This is my current obsession, actually. <laughs> this is how I make all of my handles right now. So you want to roll out your coil, and then once you have the thickness you want for the thickest part of your handles, you'll move on to rolling the middle part only. You'll have to turn the handle as you do this so the coil doesn't get uneven. It's kind of hard to explain and even to see, but once you do it you'll understand why, what I mean. Then I use a touch of water to shape the handle, mostly pressing it a little bit flatter in the middle. I call them dog bone handles, but there's a few other names for them and also different ways of making them. This technique I've adapted from how Will Talbot of Bell Hill Pottery makes his handles, since he was kind enough to share how he works on the internet. Then shape and cut to size, slip and score, attach and smooth. So now we'll get into the more creative handles. I'm going to do a couple of sculptural handles that I've come up with, but the possibilities for sculptural handles are really endless. So I'm going to post a couple of videos of some amazing artists that are doing some sculptural handles, just to get your creative minds buzzing. This field is really endless, so go wild! In my first sculptural handle, I'll start by rolling out a coil. This one I want to be thick, about 2 centimeters. Then I'm going to pat the coil so it's a bit flatter and wider. First I'm going to shape it and hold it up to the pot as usual to get the right length. Then I'll flatten it out again and cut into the coil about 3 centimeters down. I want to create two attachments on the top and bottom, so it looks like a small animal standing on the mug. Now, this is a little tricky because you won't just have two points to attach now, you'll have four. So you'll have to slip, score, and attach all four of them. I also found this a little tricky because the gaps between were a little too small for my fingers to fit. I tried using a wooden tool, but I always prefer to smooth my fingers when I can, so I just did the best that I could and that was that. Now I still wanted to add a little head to the handle so it was really looking like an animal. I sort of tried to make it look like a sheep. Really, it ended up looking like some odd creature you'd find in a Rice Boy comic, but I quite liked them. I toyed with the idea of adding a tail too, but once I realized it would be an awkward thing to handle with a tail, I decided to just leave it.
So for my last handle, I'm going to make what I call the rainbow handle. First, I roll out two coils that are more or less the same thickness. These are about one centimeter thick, maybe a little thinner. Then I'll slip and score them together. Try to stick them together as firmly as possible without losing the shape of the two foils. Then, of course, you want to shape it into that rainbow shape. There's always a side that looks better on the top and bottom, so make sure you test both sides. I think this handle would look really nice with the coils painted different colors, like a rainbow. Then, of course, you know now, slip, score, and attach. I used my wooden tool and my brush to get into the places that my fingers couldn't reach when I was smoothing. And of course, sponging at the end always helps. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let them dry very slowly under plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them upside down. First of all, you always want to dry your pots upside down. And I'm going to turn the handles so that they all face towards the inside. And then I'm going to cover them with plastic. Notice I also have plastic underneath. They're on a wooden board right now. I have plastic also underneath the pots. So when I fold this plastic over, they're going to be completely surrounded by plastic, which means they won't dry at all. I'm going to leave them like this for 24 hours um, so that they don't dry at all. This helps the moisture level in the handles and in the pot kind of equalize so that once I uncover them and let them dry naturally, they all sort of dry together. This is what really helps cracking. If you're finding that you're having cracking along where you're attaching your handles to the mug bodies, um, try this method. So after 24 hours, I'll uncover them, I'll sign them, and then I'll just let them dry out completely. And then they'll go into the kiln, I'll bisque them at 900 degrees, uh, then I will glaze them. Uh, I'm not sure what color yet. <laughs> and then I will uh, put them back into the kiln, fire them to 1250, and then they'll be done. And I'll show you the results right now. Hey guys, I hope that video was helpful for you. I had a couple audio issues while I was recording this video, so uh, thank you to everyone who stayed with me to the end. Um, I'm working on getting a better audio system set up, so hopefully that won't be such a problem in the future. Anyway, if you want to see more from me and my studio, you can follow me on Instagram at Pottery to the People. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.